Where most movies are concerned, it's basically expected that the villain dies or is at least incapacitated at the film's end, because that's what we'll generally want to see. And it's fair to say that most bad guys aren't particularly thrilled about buying the farm either. Usually they're sent kicking and screaming into the void at the end of a prolonged fight with the hero. But every so often a movie villain dives headlong into the existential abyss with a bizarre feeling of happiness. It's time for me to dive into a voiceover abyss myself Myself, so I'm Ewan, this is What Culture, and here are 10 movie villains who died happy. Number 10. Darth Vader Star Wars Episode 6 Darth Vader may ultimately be a redeemed villain by the end of the original Star Wars trilogy, but he's still an out-and-out -out bad guy for the overwhelming majority of his screen time. Vader is mortally wounded at the film's end when he saves his son Luke Skywalker from Emperor Palpatine, and in his dying moments has Luke remove his mask so he can see into his son with his own eyes. In doing so, he's able to let out a wry smile at Luke despite his agonizing pain, and though he passes away mere moments later, it's clear that he does so while being at complete peace with himself. His redemption arc now fully complete. Number 9. Bill Kill Bill Volume 2 Most surely expected Kill Bill Volume 2 to conclude with an epic sword fight between Uma Thurman's The Bride and the man who attempted to kill her and her unborn child, Bill, played by the brilliant David Carradine. Yet, it's Quentin Tarantino cannily subverted expectations by having the face-off be more of a conversation than a fight, with Kiddo administering the killing blows by way of the legendary five-point palm exploding heart technique, which causes Bill's heart to explode whenever he takes five steps. And so the exchange ends with Bill taking those five fateful steps, but not before reconciling with Beatrix, who effectively forgives him. The situation resolved and their daughter BB now with her mother where she really belongs, Bill is able to go to his grave with a bittersweet smile on his face. Number 8. The Predator Predator, 1987 Past that hideous war and there's a genuinely joyous feeling radiating from the titular extraterrestrial warrior at the end of John McTiernan's Predator, which in my view is the greatest action movie ever made. After all, the Alger are a proud race of hunter aliens, and when Dutch Arnold Schwarzenegger defeats one in the movie's climax, it seems positively delighted that it met its death at the hands of such a worthy combatant. That's and it's got one final sore loser gamer moment surprise for Dutch, as it activates a self-destruct device built into its suit, which just so happens to be a mini nuclear bomb that damn near raises the entire damn jungle, leaving Dutch lucky to be alive. In the moments before the bomb detonates, the Predator even lets out a deep cackle that eerily mimics a recording of Dutch's team mate Billy from earlier in the film. The creature straight up uses its final seconds of life to thoroughly troll Dutch, and appears absolutely thrilled by the opportunity to do so. Bless. Number 7. John Doe 7 in the climax of David Finch's gut-wrenching thriller, serial killer John Doe leads Detective Mills, Brad Pitt, and Somerset, Morgan Freeman, to a remote location where they will apparently find the final two of his seven sin-themed victims, Envy and Wrath. Once they reach the area, a package is delivered to the detectives containing the severed head of Mills' pregnant wife, Tracy, played by Gwyneth Paltrow, as Doe reveals himself to represent Envy as envious of Mills' life and encourages Mills to kill him and embody Fury, the final of the Seven Sins. By Somerset doing all he can and urging Mills not to kill Doe and let him win, Mills gives in to his rage, understandably, shooting Doe in the head and fulfilling his grim masterpiece. In his final moments, Doe appears completely at peace, closing his eyes and accepting his imminent fate, evidently satisfied that his horrific killing spree was carried out to its intended completion. Number 6. Kakihara Itchy the Killer Itchy the Killer's primary antagonist is the sadomasochistic Yakuza enforcer Kakihara, who dies a fittingly unhinged death at the climax of the Kashimike Splatterfest. During the final battle with Itchy, Itchy stamps his bladed foot in Kakihara's forehead, before he falls off a railing to his death. Where's the happiness, you might ask? Well, as 
Kakihara falls to the ground, he cackles and shouts to his foe. This is amazing! However, when we see Kakihara's corpse at the bottom, there's no wound in his head, implying that he hallucinated the final fight with Itchy and actually killed himself by throwing himself off the roof after realizing that Itchy wasn't quite the worthy opponent he believed. Number 5. Bill Foster Falling Down Joel Schumacher's falling down offers up one of the most daring and fascinating depictions of a villain protagonist. As unemployed, rage-filled white-collar worker William Foster, played by Michael Douglas, becomes increasingly less sympathetic over the course of the movie. While the film begins with Foster raging at the small frustrations of every day life, blistering heat, overpriced drinks, terrible fast food. By film's end, his rampage has caused several deaths, and he's also confirmed to be an abusive husband. The audience is as such compelled to root for soon to retire Sergeant Martin Prendergast, Robert Duvall, who, during the final showdown with Foster, points out that he is in fact the bad guy. Foster, appreciating that he'll be forced to see his beloved daughter Adele grow up behind bars, then decides to commit suicide by cop pulling out a water pistol and in turn prompting Prendergast to shoot him in self-defense. In his final moments, well aware that Adele will collect the life insurance for his death, Foster smiles and jokingly tells Prendergast, I woulda gotcha before falling off the pier. Number 4. Evil Bill & Ted Bill & Ted's Bogus Journey Bill & Ted's Bogus Journey sees the charmingly air-headed duo Alex Winter and Keanu Reeves face off against a pair of evil robot doppelgangers who kill them temporarily, take their places, and attempt to ruin their whole damn lives. Side note, this is also one of my favorite movies. I love Death Dude so much, and this particular moment where Bill & Ted make it back to the land of the living. The duo fight back, having good robot replicas of themselves built to battle the evil robots in the Battle of the Band stage. Point the evil Bill and Ted are forced to concede that they've met their match, with evil Bill cheerfully telling them, kudos to you good humanuses, moments before they're both decapitated by the good robots. In their final second of what could be called life, the evil duo have giant smiles and even deliver the sign off of, catch you later Bill and Ted. As it turns out, Bill and Ted are such awesome, good-hearted dudes that even their evil versions aren't that bad and can at least take a well-earned death on the chin. Good for them. Number 3. Max Zorin, A View to a Kill Villain deaths don't get much more deliriously entertaining than that of A View to a Kill's Max Zorin, who shuffles off his mortal coil with a goofy smile plastered on his face. Look, psychopathic happiness is still happiness, alright? Especially when it's embodied by Christopher Walken. The Bond flicks finale takes place atop the Golden Gate Bridge, with 007 Roger Moore eventually besting Zorin and leaving him clinging gingerly to the edge of the bridge. In surely one of the most brilliantly unhinged moments in the entire Bond saga, Zorin lets out a loud cackle like only Christopher Walken could, grinning to himself as he loses his grip, slips on the edge of the bridge, and falls hundreds of feet into the San Francisco Bay. Number 2. Poppy Adams – Kingsman The Golden Circle While Kingsman The Golden Circle didn't exactly give the great Julianne Moore tons to do with her villain Poppy Adams, she at least least got a memorably deranged death scene to work with. Poppy, the leader of the titular drugs cartel, meets her end when Eggsy injects her with a massive dose of her own toxin-laced heroin. Though this quickly causes Poppy to overdose and die, that's not before she enjoys one hell of a euphoric high, an almost Joker-like smile plastered across her face as she flirts with Harry, no matter that her body is already evidently shutting down. Ironically, Eggsy didn't actually actually intend to kill Poppy, but rather inject her with a dose of the toxin so she'd be able to hand over the password to her laptop in an exchange for an antidote. But as it turns out, Eggsy isn't so good with portion control, and so accidentally stuck her with a weapons grade dose of the stuff, killing her in a fraction of the intended time. All the same, Poppy went out grinning from ear to ear. And number 1. Kevin – Sin City Shortly after Elijah Wood wrapped up work on the Lord of the Rings trilogy, he pulled a total acting about turn by appearing in Sin City as the mute cannibal assassin Kevin. It is a sublimely creepy performance, but Kevin's ticket is finally punched when he faces off against Marv, played by Mickey Rourke, who manages to get the better of him and subject him to a horrendous death absolutely befitting his
his own murderous ways. Marv incapacitates Kevin firstly and then systematically cuts off each of his limbs, which he subsequently feeds to Kevin's pet wolf. However, Marv frustratingly remarks that Kevin doesn't make a sound throughout the entire nasty ordeal, and worst of all, he maintains the same calm smile on his face the whole damn time. Sure, you could maybe argue that Kevin was simply blissfully unaware of what pain feels like. He sure as hell seemed to be residing in his happy place while Marv took to his neck with a saw. And those were 10 movie villains who died happy. Have any other movie antagonists who went out on top of the world? Shout them out down in the comments below. Be sure to drop the video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more. Either way, thank you all for watching. I've been Ewan, this has been War Culture, and I'll hopefully catch you next time. Bye!